Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at the AquaBear. This is a countertop RO system, uh, or at least that's what they propose. Uh, we're going to take a look at it. I'm going to also uh, picked up a TDS meter, and we're going to kind of measure uh, my tap water, some RO water from the store, and then some water from this too, and just kind of do a little comparison and see how it does. It's all coming up right after this. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and typically on this show, we do uh, aquarium products. Or, you know, we talk about aquarium related subjects and aquarium products and that sort of thing. But this company reached out to me and they wanted me to try this uh, countertop RO machine out. So typically with uh, these products and manufacturers that reach out to me, I get a lot of light bulb people wanting me to talk about their products, and I, I mostly turn them down. But I thought that this would be a, an interesting thing to look at, but water is very important to aquarists. <laughs> and there are a lot of different reasons maybe we'd want an RO machine uh, or something like that. Of course, all I had to go by was uh, a little bit of an advertisement and some talking points that they, uh, that they sent me about this machine. This uses hydronautics technology. Uh, to filter the water, which sounds interesting. I actually have a, a, a real-life use for this in that I've installed a misting machine in one of my terrariums, and I want to make my own purified water to put through it. But this, uh, what makes this really unique is that it does hot water also. So you can also uh, not only do regular RO water, but you can also press a button here and dispense hot water of different amounts. Uh, it's got a nice little dispenser here that moves back and forth uh, depending on what your countertop looks like and what you might where you might need it it's got a removable chamber here that I'll uh, that you can take out and put in your refrigerator if you want to keep it cold for some reason it sounds pretty neat and I'm going to go over uh, a few of the features but first uh, we've got uh, cup number one here has some tap water I went got a little jug of tap water and I filled it up here uh, this cup here I'm going to put in some RO water. Uh, I got this from my local fish store. This is what they use to mix up their salt water. So do a little comparison there of the two types of water. And this here, uh, later on once we, uh, once we get this going, we will uh, fill this up and, and compare it, see how it compares to these others. I got this little TDS meter. This is a, a fairly inexpensive little TDS meter. Uh, it's got a little color-coded thing. It's got a digital display that tells you what the, what the numbers are, uh, but it's also color-coded too. And it's got a little chart on the back to let you know uh, how pure your water is. Uh, the best I can tell, I, I'm not an expert in this stuff at all, but the best I can tell is it's got two little prongs inside of here, and they're gonna measure the conductivity between the two. Uh, conductivity is actually another measurement entirely, so I don't know how that, uh, I think that there's a, probably uh, an equation that will get you to the TDS, but uh, conductivity is another measurement that you can do on here, but I'm not gonna bother with that for now. All right, so I'm gonna just take, I'm gonna take this and put it aside for now, and uh, go and turn this on again. And uh, the RO water is a little, I've got this little dent in this glass so I can tell the difference because I was like, wait, I'm going to lose track of which one's which. Okay, so this is RO water. I want to do it first and just kind of get a baseline for uh, what we're looking at. And it's measuring seven. And it's green on the back. Uh, it says 0 to 50 is ideal drinking water, RO, distiller, etc. Okay. And uh, I'm going to clear it. I'll kind of shake it off a little bit. I'm going to clear this out. So now it's at 0. And now I'm going to do my tap water. Ooh, that doesn't look good. It is 128, so quite a big difference between my tap water and, uh, let's see, it says hard water. 
it says average tap water is uh, 200 to 300. So basically I've got really hard water that we're about to put through this thing. All right, so just for the records, we got seven from RO water, 128 from my tap water. That's a huge difference. So it'll be interesting to see where this falls in between all these things. I'm not completely sure the instructions that I got, this is a prototype and the instructions I got weren't perfect, okay? <laughs> by, a long, by a long shot. But um, you can have it come into here or you can have it come into here and I'm gonna have to play with it to really know uh, how it works for certain. But one thing you have to do with every kind of device like this is flush it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and flush it out now. So what I'm doing is, uh, this has a back chamber that comes off. You hear a beep, that, that beeping indicates that you've pulled this thing off. Uh, here's kind of what the chamber looks like inside. I'm gonna go ahead and add tap water to the max line here. Let's kind of plug right in here. I'm going to go ahead and put this under here. It's got a little button here that you press to kind of start the process. And let's see what happens. All right, so this thing is churning away. And uh, definitely audible. I have this on a table, so <laughs> it might be a little bit louder on this table than it normally is. Um, but I want to give some talking points about this thing while it kind of cleans itself. It says a uh, three three layer filter elements equipped with reverse osmosis cleaner uh, and healthier than most regular water purifiers. Filter elements that come from top American brand Hydronautics, high filtration efficiency and lasts up to three years, saving you money. Space saving compact design. Uh, countertop water dispenser, no installation adapt adaptive for any occasion it's got a double water tank de design a detachable pure water tank can be extracted and refrigerated separately uh, rotated water outlet makes it uh, able to be placed arbitrarily <laughs> Isn't that funny that just means that this can be placed here or here you can slide this around I'm actually gonna put this little tray under here to get this a little closer Okay, so it says when the light comes on right here at the top, what I need to do is uh, refill this tank. So I'm going to take a peek inside this tank and see how it's doing. <laughs> so if you're not buying this for an aquarium, they have other things that they list, like uh, improves the water taste, they say, uh, for greener living because, you know, less water bottles and stuff. And no... <laughs> And no need to worry about pollution from water pipes and, and things like that, too. So, so there are a number of positive reasons to use one of these. Going through the instructions. If you take the top of this off, it does have two filter rods. Uh, one of them it says it needs to be replaced one, every 12 months. And one, it needs to be replaced every uh, six months. They haven't told me, I, I wrote them to ask them if it would be included, like extra ones would be included, and they're not sure yet. Uh, you'll for sure be able to buy them from their from their website once they become uh, established and they get all their P's and Q's in a row. But uh, for now, I'm not sure. But do note that there are two rods in here that are used for filtration. So the water's passing through all those things and then going into this container here. Uh, a lot of times, usually with traditional RO waters, uh, water creators, there are there's wastewater involved, and I don't I don't see any outlet or place for wastewater to go in this so I'm not I'm not exactly sure how that works or if it's true RO water because of that that's part of the reason I broke out the TDS meter so we can see what's really happening now there's every chance that this is just highly filtered water and maybe RO in a different way but I'm not a scientist or a chemist or anything like that so this these are just kind of tests that that uh, people that 
don't know a lot about water chemistry, maybe you could try. I know a little bit about water from keeping an aquarium, so I've got this TDS meter to kind of like figure out where we're at. Okay, so it's run all the way through the cycle, and now it looks like it's emptying this container into here. And once again, this is just a, this is just kind of a, a cleansing cycle that you have to do on every type of RO machine, so interesting. All right, so I've gone all the way through the, uh, the cleansing process, the initial process. And something I noticed that wasn't in the instructions, it's a little drippy underneath the, the, this thing, but the, the lid, the lid fits perfectly right underneath here. So if you're concerned about getting drips on your countertop or something, you could actually put this here. Just remember to take it off before you reinsert this onto the main unit. And I'm curious to see what it does here. All right, so after I went through the cleansing process, all the lights of these control panels kind of came to life. Uh, it might be hard to see, I'm not sure, but there's a little lock here, and that's a child safety lock. Uh, it reduces the functions that can be done with it, like it won't produce hot water, for example, uh, while the child safety lock is on there. Uh, you can turn that off easily just by pressing it for a couple of seconds, and that'll disable the child lock and let you do some of the other functions. Uh, it looks like, and then I'll go right back to lock. You can hold this down, I think, for a little bit longer and permanently disable that, but it's real handy just to kind of hit that, then hit the either cold water or warm water, and then just let it go back to normal. Also at the top here, uh, it's got adjustments for how much water that you want to pull out. We've got uh, an eight ounce option or a 12 ounce option or max. Not sure what Max is. Maybe Max just pulls it all the way uh, through this thing and fills up a pitcher like I was doing before. So I didn't do anything to initiate uh, the, the water cleaning, and you can hear it rumbling. It's going again. Basically, I just took the, uh, I ran through the cycle. All these lights lit up, and there's a little light here that'll indicate that it needs to be that it needs to be filled up. In fact, there's a light right now above what looks like a water drop with um, a water drop with like little circles and stuff. So I assume that that means that it's, it's um, so I assume what that means is it's actually purifying the water now. So I didn't do anything. I filled this thing up to, to where it says max inside the lid. I inserted it and it just starts purifying the water and putting it into here. So what my assumption is, because it doesn't say it in the instructions is, is that I'll do that. This will just kind of fill up and then I can use this to dispense the water out of that container if I want. Now, if the other option you have is actually to just pull this out, this pulls straight out. We'll do that a little bit after it's finished. So this pulls straight out, and you, it's got a little tiny pitcher, and you can take that and put it into the, uh, into the refrigerator if you prefer some cold water that way. What's interesting, though, is if you leave it in here, you can, uh, you can just pump it out by this thing. Now, what I haven't seen in this is a wastewater, uh, an area for wastewater, so I don't know, uh, I, I don't think it's dispensing wastewater anywhere. I think it just runs through those filters and, and that's what it is. So it'll be really interesting to see, um, <laughs> it'll be really interesting to see exactly how uh, this thing measures up on the TDS meter. So while this thing churns away, uh, what I think I'll do is I'll go ahead and, and get my cups set up again uh, to do a little comparison. And uh, we already saw how bad my, my tap water is, or how hard my tap water is. So we'll test the RO water and uh, water from this thing. Maybe I'll use a little dispenser to, to pour it out. That'll be interesting. This does take a while, though. Uh, this little uh, this process takes a good... It seems like uh, 10 or 15 minutes, so let's just come back when this is done. Okay, so it's finished. It's actually a little faster than it was before when I did the um, when I did the cleansing. It actually went pretty quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm just going to pick I want to pick off here. I'm going to kind of tap it. I, I tap the lock to kind of reactivate the lights and stuff. And I don't think I covered this before, but these lights here at the bottom are the quality of the filters. There's a 
PPC filter and an RO filter, it says. So uh, that's what that indicates. So I'm going to take, uh, it's on 8 ounce already. I can make adjustments uh, for which one that I want with these up and down arrows. Actually, you could just press one of them and it'll switch between them all. They work kind of the same. But um, I'm going to pick 8 ounce. I'm not sure how, how if this is 8 ounces or what. <laughs> If I if it goes over, I'll, I'll use a pitcher or something. But uh, I'm going to pick the eight ounces. And I'm going to pick cold water here and just kind of. Oh, it lights up right here too. That's interesting. It's going to pump out a little bit of water for me. All right. So I noticed when it was doing its flush that uh, it didn't empty the reservoir all the way. So what I think is going on now is it's replenishing the the water that it just that it just pulled out. So I'm going to let that finish before I talk anymore. <laughs> all right, just a baseline again. Here's the water from the RO, and we're getting a big old a seven on that. Give a little shake here, very professional. We're back to zero, according to this. I put it in, and the verdict is 14. Now, 14 is about double what seven is, but it's nowhere close to 128. So, when you think that this thing took my water from 128 parts per million to 14. That is, that is uh, very good. <laughs> In fact, the back of this meter lists uh, pretty much 0 to 50 as RODI water, or RODI uh, distillation, etc. is what it says. So 14 is a pretty good score. Let me clear that out and try it again. Yep, a good solid 14 both times. That's a good indication. Well, I guess it works. I'm not sure how or why, but it does work. All right, so it occurred to me as I was editing this video that uh, perhaps there were some other tests that I could do. Uh, be sure to list in the description down below any other tests that you'd like to run, and if I have that test available to me, I'll go ahead and run it on the water also, and I'll put it in a pinned comment. So just let me know. Uh, this thing will measure other stuff. This will measure temperature too. So I wonder, maybe, maybe we can uh, measure the temperature that comes out of it too. Let's get a mug. Let's get a mug for that. Okay, I'm back with a mug, and I just happen to find uh, the most perfect mug you can imagine for this <laughs> this experiment. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the lock again. I need to unlock it for hot water. That's a child safety feature. So I'm gonna unlock it. And then I'm going to immediately hit this uh, hot water one. And it uh, looks like it immediately comes out. I just picked the 8 ounce uh, again. You can feel that it's warm right here at the top. Yep, it's steaming. I'm going to get my thermometer ready here. So you have a nice hot cup of tea. This is one of the things that supposedly makes this unique from other RO machines. Not that I've uh, tried any other RO machines, but we're going to go ahead and measure the temperature. It says it's 76.8 right now. Do you measure the temperature on a different side? 77. Oh, it's going up. We'll let this sit for a minute. And again, uh, since it's distributed some of the water, it's pumping some more out of the tank. There's a little a little light here above that shows that it's uh, it's in the process of like turning through some more water. Uh, this is still clicking up. I'm at 107 and going up. It's like it very quickly resets and is ready for the next next bit of uh, water. This is still going up. It's a really slow thermometer. Huh. This thing actually shut off. And then I turned it back on, and uh, the part per million was actually a little bit more with the heated water. So that's interesting. It's at 29, which is still very acceptable. 
but uh, it is uh, notably higher than it is with uh, without the heated water, with just the cold water. So that's interesting. Yeah, this is still seven, pretty consistently seven. Clearing it out to the here. 27. So that's interesting. We'll switch the mode to temperature. Uh, the temperature got to about 130 degrees. Uh, it, it might be a little bit warmer than that. I, I haven't calibrated this or, or know how, how, how efficient it is as a thermometer. <laughs> but you can feel it. It definitely got, it got very, very hot. You can have a nice hot cup of tea with that. Interesting. That's still going up, 132. I just thought that was interesting. The TDS was a little bit higher with, uh, with hot water. All right, so my assumption is that if I hit max on here, it's just going to fill this all the way up. So let's do that. Now, I don't think I have to unlock it for this. Uh, it's got a little light blinking here telling me that this is empty inside, but uh, so am I. All right, so I'm going to switch this up to max just so we've done everything. How do I make it come out? Uh, I guess I'll just hit cold water. And if I'm right, this will just kind of empty it out. Yep, there you have it. This is empty. This is empty. And there's actually still a little bit of water in the bottom of this. Interesting. Wow, that's the Aqua Bear. I gotta say, I, I was a bit skeptical. I was a bit skeptical at first at how the aqua bear would do. But, uh, you know, the results are clear. It's making water with a lower TDS than my tap water by quite a lot. You know, even measuring inside of this bottle here, we're still at, uh, actually that's at 11. Oh, 15, okay. So it got to 15 just inside of this bottle. So that's pretty cool. So there's a lot of domestic uses for this thing, and, and there's also uh, a few uses if you're a, a pet fanatic like myself. Maybe you've got lizards that you need your, your mister for, or uh, maybe you've got some shrimp that you're keeping and you need to top off, or salt water and you want to have something to top it off. I mean, this is a pretty, pretty decent amount of water uh, for a top off on a salt water tank, uh, especially maybe one of those tiny nano ones that are kind of high maintenance. I guess I could do the final thing and just like do a little taste test comparison between the two. Try my tap water. Should I try my tap water first? Tastes like tap water. Tastes a bit less like tap water. <laughs> This is why I don't have a food channel. Interesting. Yep. So, uh, maybe you need soft water for other things. Maybe you've got uh, some crystal shrimp that you're, you're raising and you need extra, you know, you want to you take most of the minerals out and add maybe a few back in, uh, topping off the salt water tank. There's a, there's a million different reasons to have one of these. So this isn't a product that I really had sought out for myself, but I'm really thankful that they contacted me because it seems to work and it's pretty neat. I'll be interested to see what the refills cost for this. Uh, I also don't have a baseline cost. Like, I'm not even sure what, what these are, are going to go for. Uh, but I'm going to ask them for any links that they want uh, for people to go to for more information, and I'll put them down below in the body of this video. This is a new product. I, I don't know if it's to market yet, but it's coming to market very soon. And uh, it, it's really small. It's not any bigger than uh, most coffee makers and stuff. Uh, it's pretty convenient with the spout coming around this way. You can put it on your counter. It's got a little drip tray too to kind of keep water from building up. Or you can just kind of make it, never use this thing, pull it out of here and use, uh, use the pitcher. You know, this pops right out. And you can use it to pour water this way. A little drippy on the bottom there, but yeah. So you can pull that, pull that out, put it in your fridge, uh, or pour water with it that way. 
and it just plugs right back in. Gives you a little audible beep when the, to let you know that things are inserted correctly. I like that it's got a child lock so that your kids can't just come up and like uh, scald themselves with, a, uh, with water. <laughs> so it looks like a successful product to me. So thanks so much for sending this to me. It'll be interesting. Uh, I'm definitely, I'm going to put it into use right away uh, on my misting system to keep, uh, to keep my misters from clogging up on my vivarium. And who knows, I might find some more applications for it as I, uh, as I move on with my fish hobby as well. <laughs> also, these little TDS meters that I got on Amazon, super easy to use and very cheap. I think this was like $20. And it's, uh, I'll probably use it all the time now. Now I just want to go stick it in all my aquariums and see if it's still as high as, uh, as my regular tap water. I was shocked at how at the difference between my tap water and, and like RO water and, and this stuff. You know, definitely interesting to see the difference there. But that's all I got for you today. I'll be back real soon with another video. Until next time, follow your bliss. Keep a clean tank. Keep some clean water. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.